G'day everyone, my name's Lucas and this is SumSub, a channel about survival in the online jungle. Now you might be surprised to see me again and asking yourself, where's the lovely Emily or the Swamp Bradley? Well, I'm just here to provide a little drop of Aussie in this otherwise posh British ocean. How's that for you? On the topic of British people and their strange shenanigans, have you ever dreamt of owning your own invisibility cloak from Harry Potter? My body's gone. Well, now engineers around the world are working on similar devices, but the results are far from convincing. The main problem is that such an illusion should combine sort of two contradictory principles. For invisibility to work, it needs to let in light from objects outside of itself, but not let light through in the opposite direction. In other words, you see everything and nobody sees you. I've got good news for you. This is possible in the world of computer technology. And today, we're gonna to be opening the Pandora's box of digital invisibility to show you how to put such a device on your computer. By the way, the computer I'm talking about has been in front of you this whole time. Well, this is it. This is no simple flash drive. It already has a powerful operating system installed on it that will work with most personal computers and laptops. Just insert it into the USB port and reboot the system to open up a whole new world of possibilities. Finish working, turn off the computer, pull out the flash drive, and no trace of your actions will remain. If you're interested in information security, or maybe just a keen television fan, you've probably heard about the series Mr. Robot. Just a few years ago, it really raised the bar for authenticity of representing hacking in television shows. The protagonist didn't try to hack the Pentagon by stuffing meaningless combinations of characters into a command line or, you know, frantically typing gibberish on their keyboards. They used real network monitoring programs, port scanners, and similar tools. It was thanks to Mr. Robot that many enthusiasts learned about Kali Linux. Kali is based on Debian, but differs in the focus of the programs that are included in the build. For example, there's Wireshark here, a network packet analyzer that we used in a video about how phones are listening to us. There's the famous network scanner, Nmap, the legendary John the Ripper password cracker, tools for working with my favorite Arduino boards, and even Multegro, in case you have to make use of open source intelligence. This distribution was originally created for specialists in the field of computer security, but its increasing popularity has led to it acquiring a large number of interesting modules and programs. Of course, they allow you to not only monitor other computers, but also to fully control your own. Therefore, Kali Linux is ideally suited for the role of our invisible computer. Alaska. So I'm not going to install Kali on my computer, but instead I'm going to make a bootable USB flash drive. Firstly, this means I won't leave any traces of my presence on the computer itself. Secondly, there will also be no evidence left on the flash drive either. Each time the power is turned off, the system will return to its original settings. Nice. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Nice. This is the simplest and most logical step. I go to the site Kali.org and I find myself facing a choice. Here you can download versions of the operating system for Windows, Mac, mobile devices, and even single board computers like Raspberry Pi. If you don't have a spare USB flash drive at hand, just simply download images for virtual machines. It's not gonna have the sort of full functionality and furthermore shouldn't be used if you are trying to achieve anonymity, but it'll do the trick if you just wanna feel like Elliot Anderson. Right now, what interests me the most is the live boot section. Here are the system assemblies that can be run from a USB flash drive. One click and the download of three gigabytes has begun. I don't recommend downloading the full version. It's, it's probably gonna be too big. And if something is missing in the future, you can always install applications with a couple of commands in the console. Don't download the experimental version either. This is pretty much just for experts and enthusiasts to look at errors in the code. I mean, we're nerding out here today, but come on, we're not experimental mode nerding out just yet. Pay attention to the link titled documentation. You know, we're embarking on the path of real hackers. So we're gonna have to read up a little bit of the background. You see the whole process of creating a bootable USB flash drive is described here in detail. There are links to programs for recording images and choosing the necessary settings. I will use the first of the other proposed programs, Etcher. There are only two buttons. First, I need to select the image 
that I'll upload to the flash drive and then specify its ladder. That's all. Nothing complicated or unnecessary. The installation process takes about 10 minutes and during this process, there isn't really much to look at. But after it's all over, the installer will invite you to leave your opinion about the program on Twitter. I haven't even launched Kali yet, but I can already boast that I'm a hacker. Excellent. So Windows no longer sees the flash drive. This is a good sign. It means everything is working as it should. I'll leave it in the computer and restart the system. I have priority booting now configured from USB devices. So the computer will first try to find the operating system on external hard drives and flash drives, and only then from the main disk. So now Kali boot menu appears on my screen. I'll probably have to come back later to the advanced settings to check a few things, but right now I'm pretty keen to get started. Let's click on the top line. Hmm, okay. So here's my first question. The password's already been set, but I don't know it. Okay, well, I'll start by trying the classics. Username admin, password admin. Mm, wait a minute, not gonna work. This is Linux, so it should be maybe root and root. Aha, okay, reject it again. Well, we'll have to check the documentation section. It turns out that I almost guessed it. I mean, previously by default, all users worked in Kali under the main user. But recently the creators of the system decided to change this pair too. And here's another excellent example of programmer's creativity. Kali and Kali. That's it, I'm in the system. So far, nothing abnormal, except you can see that the start button is in the upper left-hand corner. A little unusual, but you'll forget about it pretty quick. The list of programs is huge, and the names of the sections alone command respect. See information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, password selection, attacks on wireless networks. Well, admit it, your eyes lit up at that one too. Even the browser is putting ideas in my head. I mean, look at the bookmarks that are already saved here. Using this system as an average office computer is unlikely to be comfortable. Uh, there's a text editor, but it's very simple, very rough. It's enough for notes, maybe drafts. You'd pretty much be struggling to create a beautiful report in it. And besides, when I turn off the computer, all the information and settings will disappear. The next time the system will boot, it'll do so in exactly the same state it was during its first launch. If an attacker tries to steal your laptop, it's enough to just pull out the flash drive and they won't get any information. Of course, you can allocate an additional section for storing data, but what we wanna build here is a tool that leaves no trace. So in this instance, we're not gonna do that. If you decide to save the data, create an encrypted disk, it has a unique feature where you can set a password that will not open it, but instead erase the keys and the encrypted data. I recommend using long and random passwords to store your data and making the destruction password short and predictable. For example, using your date of birth or the name of your pet. If someone tries to open the protection, they'll start probably by going through those obvious passwords and thereby destroying any evidence against you. As for the data security on the computer itself, it's quite incomparable with Windows. So now let's try to assess what other hackers can find out about us. I'll start with digital fingerprints, which we've already talked about in a separate video. The result of the check on Am I Unique website leaves a lot to be desired. Despite the fact that I'm using the same version of the system as thousands of other people, there are things giving me away. Look, first of all, there's the Firefox version. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Plus, the size of my laptop screen is also giving me away. Fortunately, I just need this browser to download another one that can mimic other people's fingerprints. Such solutions are often used by traffic arbitrage specialists, advertisers, and contextual advertising experts. Now, I won't advertise this specific solution, but I'll just say that my choice would be between commercial solutions such as multi-login or ghost browser. They will reliably cover my digital fingerprints, and they're enough to protect my privacy during normal surfing. Now the result on Am I Unique looks completely different. Of course, I won't connect as well to a network directly. I'll take the opportunity to connect to a list of proxy servers. This is much easier to do here than in other operating systems. I mean, have you ever tried to set up a wired network in Windows? It's just a pile of menus, some of which are going back to the days of XP. Here, everything is intuitive and clearly organized. Obviously, I won't connect to the internet via office or home Wi-Fi, 
For now, other people's networks will become my allies. Fortunately, I can connect with them even without knowing their passwords. You see, Kali Linux already has programs installed for hacking other people's networks. By the way, for working in public places, the creators of Kali have provided quite a fun function. Look here. Now I will type the command in the terminal and the interface will change. You see the formidable Kali Linux has disguised itself as the usual Windows 10. Now you can sit quietly in the food court drinking a bubble tea and no one will pay much attention to you. You know, I myself didn't expect that in under 40 minutes, I would be able to create a flash drive that would turn an ordinary computer into a powerful tool for defense or attack. The tools of network security experts are becoming more and more accessible every day. If 10 years ago, we pretty much couldn't even get past the black screen of the terminal, now there are more and more tools with increasingly simple and friendly interfaces. Don't be afraid to jump headfirst into the world of network security. Even with just a little bit of effort, you can significantly protect yourself from intruders. In the digital jungle, the weak get got. So even if you spend a small amount of time on such security measures, you'll be of no interest to those lurking in the shadows. Feel free to leave questions about information security in the comments, share your experiences with us, and tell us what you would like to discuss next. All the presenters, including myself, closely follow the comments. My name's Lucas. Good luck getting online with Kali and freebooting your neighbor's internet. I and the SumSub experts will be waiting for you in our next video. See you next time.